Um, so what I wanted to do today um, was just kind of talk a little bit around the work that's been happening across the 32 Scottish local authorities. Um, has, as Jez has covered off, um, the percent framework agreement will see at least 100 million allocated through PB by local government in Scotland by 2022. However, I think it's fair to say that work around climate and PB is still at quite an early phase, with many PB processes happening locally, being directed by existing corporate council plans, which haven't always necessarily focused as much around climate. However, I do think that that is changing. We're, the Climate Change Assembly is bringing that to the attention nationally, and that is kind of filtering down to a local government level. Um, but we're still at a stage of systems and culture change within councils as we move from small grants PB, where we have kind of one off pots of money into the mainstream budgeting um, idea where we have, you know, the kind of ongoing uh, financial decision making on be it an annual um, basis or kind of a semi regular basis between councils and communities. Um, I think we also kind of the work of local government throughout this period has kind of brought a whole range of issues into focus that has been directed by local government and their communities. So, and I think it's important to obviously differentiate pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. So pre-pandemic, the range of what we were calling mainstream PB processes have covered um, a whole host of services which potentially have climate implications, including parks and green spaces, community planning, transport, outdoor services, so roads, uh, green space improvements, planting, nature-based activities, um, environmental improvements for social housing tenants, funds in terms of how funding is allocated from renewable energy. So we have a lot of wind farms. So how community benefit money is being allocated. Um, councils are looking at PB as a way to do this. Town centre improvements, poverty inequality and well-being and PB in schools. Um, however, I think changing priorities both locally and nationally are demonstrating a need for local government and communities to engage on issues in climate and sustainability in a more focused way. And we are experiencing that in terms of working closely with um, colleagues in local government. Alongside this is going to be central to the success. To su the success of this is going to be the policy framing of climate and PB with things around equitability of rights, um, human rights and access to participatory processes and how they can be ensured, especially in a post pandemic environment where we're looking more towards digital engagement and how do we work with those who are maybe furthest from participatory processes or who typically haven't engaged as we're going to be looking to rely on this more as we're rolling out on the on the PB commitment. Um, and we're also seeing um, this emerge as a national priority through the publication of the Just Transition Report. So this has recently been published, which has um, called for the establishment of a green PB commitment, similar to our 1% commitment that we have with local government, which is looking to support projects and ensure that there is a fair, equitable and just transition to net zero for our communities. So there's a lot of work, a lot of work happening nationally there around the policy environment. Similarly, we're also seeing work around housing with Scotland's emissions targets is being recognised nationally by government in terms of an area for incredible improvement in terms of emissions and the use of housing revenue for participatory budgeting is another key area that local government is starting to examine and that's also being picked up strategically by the National Working Group in Scotland. I'll finish there, I'm aware of time and yeah. hand over to Oliver if that's okay. 